I'm really excited to share with you just some really great tips and the formula I actually use to book all of Oliver's guests on his podcast, Founders Club, including Grant Cardone. So, um, but first, last week was a, the last time I was on, it was a little bit sketchy. So I want to go over a quick recap of everything that we did, um, everything that we talked about last time. So what you want to do, here's just really quickly, the things you want to make absolutely sure you know before you launch your podcast is it's just not a voiceover that you throw up online, right? It's not that at all. An actual podcast takes a ton of planning and a ton of work if you want it to be successful. So number one, you want to make sure you have three episodes ready to go in the can, in the pipeline, done before you even consider launching your podcast. They need to be edited, done, ready to go. If you're doing a video podcast, make sure your video is ready to go. If it's just straight audio, just make sure your audio is nice and clean, ready to go with your intro, your outro, any music that you want in there, have them complete and ready to launch. Once you have those, you're going to sign up for your podcast podcast hosting platform. You're going to need that. We use Libsyn for Founders Club, so you can go on there. You can sign up. You can also send me a quick DM, and I can let you know everything that I went over last time about how to set up your Libsyn hosting. The thing you need to know about hosting is that your hosting package, create your hosting um, site creates your RSS feed. Your RSS feed is what gets sent out to all the platforms like iTunes, um, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio even, and Pandora now does podcasts as well. So these get sent out to all of them, but it takes a few weeks before Apple, actually Apple iTunes actually approves your podcast. The other thing you need to realize is you need to have all of your artwork ready as well. Not only your actual graphic and your artwork for your channel, for your podcast on your hosting, but each episode needs its own graphic that's optimized for iTunes in your hosting. Okay, so that's everything pretty much you need to know for that. Get all your graphics ready, have three in the can ready to go, launch it, Set your calendar also for three months out because that's how long it takes iHeartRadio to approve your podcast and get it up on iHeartRadio. So there's a lot going on when it comes to actually launching your podcast. If you want any more information on that to actually how to launch it, just reach out to me, DM me. I'll be happy to go over all that again in a little bit more detail and help you guys out. Um, somebody just sent me a text. So hopefully they're sending me a text that says things are going really well. Let me look and see. It's Lido. I don't know. Well, hopefully, we'll see. Hopefully, I'm live. Hopefully, this is going smooth. Oh my goodness, I'm nerve wracked. Um, so anyway, it says I'm live. I'm gonna keep on going. What um, what we get, need to get into today, though, is everyone was asking me how the heck did you launch Grant Cardone? I even had somebody ask me how much did that cost, right? Everybody always thinks that having a big name guest on your show means paying big money. That is not the case at all. Um, my background began in PR. So I originally, when I went, went to school for my degree in communications, my emphasis was on PR. So I actually started working with Oliver and Sam um, specifically in the role of doing PR and writing their press releases because that was my background. It has since obviously over almost eight years now morphed into um, uh, me really diving deep into my passion for video and visual storytelling, but I still tap into those PR skills that I had that I developed um, a long time ago. And I'm going to show you some of those today and how I booked Grant Cardone and a bunch of other really big name guests, especially the ones coming up um, that we're working on now as well. So let's dive right in. The first thing I want you guys to understand is that stats are everything. Okay. When you're reaching out to a guest and saying, hey, I'm Oliver Graff, I want to have you on my show because I am the co-owner and co-founder and president of Big Block Realty. They're going to be like, and, right? So they want to know what's in it for them. And the way that you tell these guests what's in it for them and how this can elevate them and how many eyeballs you're going to be able to get them on their message, on their product, on their website. How much traffic can you drive 
to them? What is the size of the audience that they are going to be getting in front of? And for them, that's really all they want to see. Honestly, they don't really care that much about you know who you are they want to know your accolades they want to know what you're doing out in the community they want to know that you're a professional all those kinds of things but really the number one thing they want to know is what's in it for them so stats are absolutely everything and we're going to go over that right now the first thing you're going to want to do to help you elevate your status and i had someone tell me this recently too that i i sent this pitch deck too. So we're going to go over the pitch deck in a minute. So the pitch deck, someone told me the other day, they sent me a screenshot of an email that they received from someone else that was just like, Hey, um, it was just a lot of text, right? And, and a lot of text, sometimes it's hard to read. It's boring, whatever. So it was just a lot of text. Hey, here's, you know, this person's going to be great for your show, blah, 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 blah. And it was really just a lot of text all in the body of the email with a couple of links that you have to link on and blah, blah, blah. And then they had a screenshot next to the one that I sent them and said, you stand out as kind of a, more of a professional, more of an authority. And that's kind of what you want to keep in mind. Anytime you're going to approach somebody, especially a high profile person, you want to come across as ultra professional. You've got this on lock. You've been doing this forever. And trust me, Oliver and I went through a ton of trial and error to get this thing on lock. So, I mean, I'm sharing this with you guys because I want you to avoid some of the pitfalls that we went into and help save you some time and definitely some frustration. <laughs> um, so we're going to go over that right now. So it's called a pitch deck. What you're going to want to do is really focus on all of the stats, all of the details, and again, what is in it for them. I'm going to share my screen with you real quick, um, and then we'll dive, we'll dive right in. So hopefully you can see this. I'm looking at a live feed. I'm trying to see the live feed in the Google um, group right now, but I'm not finding it. So I'm, again, I'm really hoping that this is working. Lido, if you're watching, text me and let me know that this is a thumbs up, that this is actually working. Um, let me see, I'll get back in here, check it out. Am I live? I don't see my live feed. So I'm hoping this is working, but anyway, if I'm recording it, so hopefully I'll be able to post this for you. So this is the pitch deck. So this is what I created for Oliver so that we can attach this to any email. And I have a swipe email that we're going to go over next. This is what I send to every single potential guest that we're thinking of having. And Lito just gave me a thumbs up. It's working. Okay. Yay. All right. So this is the deck. This deck is what I created to make sure that not only am I telling them what's in it for them in the body of an email with a bunch of text that um, people get bored with, but I want to give always a visual representation of what's in it for them. People want to see this in a very concise way and a colorful way and an attention grabbing way. Right? So this is Oliver's, this is a pitch deck for Oliver. And obviously it's very branded to Oliver's podcast. His podcast is black and white. It's very thought out. Um, the way that his branding is and everything that he does go to his YouTube channel. If you want to see how we sort of brand everything from the full episodes to the, to the, to the micro content, which we call the golden nugget content that we pull out of each one of these episodes, we pull out between five, 10, maybe sometimes even 15 small little nuggets that we use throughout, I mean, for six months or even longer that link back to the full episode. You can look at his branding and see what he has done to brand everything so that when people see this, they think Founders Club with Oliver Graff and so that it's memorable, right? So that's really what you want to do when you're thinking of launching it and you're getting those three episodes ready to go, make sure that you have your branding on absolute lock, okay? So once you've done all that, you're going to create this pitch deck. All right. You're going to want to put your brand on the first page. You're going to want to put down here in the lower right hand corner over here. Where how what are these stats for? Like this is from January 1st through April 15th. So I'm going to be updating this soon after we launch the Grant Cardone episode. I'll be uploading. I'll be uploading the stats again because we know that they're going to um, they're going to go way up. All right. 
First thing you're gonna, gonna wanna do, or at least the first thing that I wanted to do is let them know that they're going to be everywhere. And our philosophy is that we believe in being everywhere. We want them to know that. It's colorful, it's still branded with his, with his brand, his podcast brand. And we want them to know that the podcast is gonna be on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Pandora, Spotify. Those are the top podcast platforms out there. And they wanna see that you know what you're talking about. And not only that, by mentioning Pandora, it actually shows that we are up to date on what's going on in the podcast world because Pandora is, is fairly new to um, launching their podcast platform. So they know that we're, this is pretty up to date and we're on top of our stuff, right? If you're doing a video podcast, which I recommend you doing, because again, it's just more eyeballs, not only on your podcast and your brand and your message, but it's more eyeballs that you can show your guests that they're going to be getting in front of more audiences, right? So we put here that the video that they're gonna, they're gonna be on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, IGTV, LinkedIn, Twitter, personal and business. So this is stories, this is, you know, this is on their feed, all that good stuff. And if you wanna throw in, hey, you're also gonna be turning this podcast into a blog. So Oliver turns his podcast into a blog. Um, this keeps doing it. So hopefully I won't keep getting that ding. Um, I'll turn this off. Hopefully this will help. All right. So Oliver turns all of his podcasts into a blog as well, which is incredible. They We turn them into mega blogs. So we order captions, we order the transcripts and we turn those actual transcripts into a mega blog for his podcast. So they can go onto his blog right here and we put, you know, the URL for his blog. They can go there and actually see how we turn that into a blog and see how many more eyeballs they get on it. All right. So we're going to go to the next part. The next part is the demographic. If you're reaching out to, you know, whatever audience you're reaching out to, whatever guests you're reaching out to, to be on this podcast, you want to let them know what is the demographic that we have for this podcast so that they can customize, you know, Oliver's going to ask the question. He obviously does his homework and his due diligence and all that stuff and formulates a ton of questions before he ever even gets online to interview these people. So the overall structure of the podcast is already set. However, we don't want to be talking about things and sending out a message that is geared, you know, 80% towards women and 10% towards men and 10% towards, you know, whatever. Um, we want to make sure that we're tailoring the message to the demographic that follows Oliver's podcast, right? So we're going, okay, we've got a pretty semi-even distribution. We've got 68% men and 32% women for Oliver's podcasts. All right. Men ages 25 to 34 make up the greatest percentage of viewers at 21.9%. Men 35 to 44 make up 13.6%. So basically 25 to 44 men are the strongest demographic for Oliver's podcast, right? So we want to make sure that the guests know that what, the, what this is to make sure that they feel like this is a fit for them. If their message and who they are, like Grant Cardone, is his audience primarily men, is his audience primarily women, we wanna make sure that they know that our audience demographic is a really good fit for them and their audience demographic and their message as well. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to put that in there. Next, we're gonna go into who's watching. We wanna let the guests know that we're not, we're not just, we're not putting this up there and nobody's looking at this content, right? They're not going to say yes to a podcast that nobody's watching or listening to. So what we want to tell them is what are some of the latest views that are organic, not paid for? You always want to make sure you're putting up here. You want to make sure that these are organic views. These are not views that we're paying for. These are views that people are actually doing Google searches and finding Oliver's podcast, um, and getting really great traction, right? So if you put this in front of one of the guests, we, here's three recent Founders Club episodes on YouTube and the views for a lifetime, right? So we wanna say, we want you to be on our show because guess what? You're gonna get anywhere between 17,000 and 43.9, 44,000 views 
just on YouTube. This isn't, this isn't on iTunes. This isn't them listening on iTunes. This isn't social media. This isn't any of that. This is literally just the organic views that we have had on these three episodes. Bravo to Andrew Greer. Check that out. Oh man, he is just crushing. People are loving the content on becoming a real estate developer. It's been the absolute number one crusher so far. See how Grant Cardone does when we launch that one. So um, that's really great to see but what i love about this is that they can see that holy crap this is what i'm gonna get just on one platform on oliver's youtube so that's really cool the next one we're gonna get into let's look at what's going on for 90 days youtube glimpse right in 90 days oliver's youtube views have he's had 93.4 thousand views on YouTube. So he's had almost 100,000 views. He's had almost 12,000 YouTube searches. So people have actually searched on YouTube almost 12,000 times um, for Oliver's podcast, which is really cool. We've also had 589,000 minutes watched. So people are people are viewing, people are searching, and people are watching his podcast on YouTube. We want to make sure the viewer, the, the potential guests know that, right? Um, next, we're going to go here. You really want to make a big statement, right? Recent guests. We're, Tom Ferry's coming up. He had to cancel a couple times because of COVID, but he's coming up on the show. We're in the process of rescheduling him, um, which is really exciting. But you want to all, you just pop this in here. You just want to go, oh, wow, potential guests are going to look at this and go, oh, wow, recent guests, Grant Cardone, Tom Ferry. That's amazing, right? So you want to throw some visuals in there that are going to let people know that you're booking other high profile guests as well. We also wanted to include in here some other past guests that we've had that are high profile that have had really, we've had some really great success, really great views. It shows a lot of, you know, a lot of diversity, really. I mean, we have everybody from Perry Belcher to Car to Greg Reed to Carrie Shaw, Scott Duffy, um, Marshall Silver, Rob Cleave, Sal Buscemi. We've had Sharon. He was super fun. Recently, Michael Burnoff. We've had Maureen McCann. It's just been a really fun ride. And this isn't even all of them. So put your top guests on that, right? Again, Founders Club, how many unique downloads have you had? Now, this is just the podcast. This does not include... Um, this is just iTunes, right? So this does not include Spotify. This does not include um, Pandora or any of those. This is really just iTunes unique downloads. So we're getting into now the podcast itself. This again is only since April. So this is going to change. I'm going to re-update this probably about every three months, right? Um, if we're launching a podcast every week and these numbers change significantly, you're going to want to change this on a monthly basis before you send it out to new guests, right? Potential guests. So we have 6,800 unique downloads so far. I just checked today. That's actually jumped up to 7,500. I just checked this on our lips and hosting this morning. Um, and so we're up to 7,500 unique downloads already. Uh, we're going to be super excited when we hit 10K. That's going to be fun. So you're going to want to put those stats in there. What, what other platforms have really impressive numbers? Here we go. Sorry, people. All right, let's go back to a couple of things, and I'll just quickly scroll real quick and show you real quick what I'm talking about. Here's the deck. Lido, is it screen sharing? Hopefully it is. So here's the deck again. You're going to want to brand it. You're going to want to put all of your platforms on here to show the guests what platforms you're going to be putting them on and getting them in front of audiences. Here's the demographics that you're going to want to show them. You're going to want to get in there and get the demographics and show them. Hopefully this is screen sharing. Um, again, who's watching? Andrew Greer, again, shout out. Um, who's watching? Here's the, here's the page you're going to do for that. The next one is you're going to put the 90 day YouTube glimpse. Who's how many views, how many searches, how many minutes watched. You're going to put your recent guests really make this pop and stand out. We're going to put more guests on here, right? You're going to put your top performers and biggest names on here. Then you want to get into your podcast. How many downloads have you had? Unique downloads. Okay. We're up to 7,500. So I'm going to get in there and change that. And then we're here. 
So again, you want to, what other platforms, where are you going to put them in front of that have really impressive numbers? So Oliver goes live on his podcast um, through Zoom since COVID. We usually go out and do this in, in person, in different locations, in bars and restaurants. We're getting ready to do one coming up in two months, I think, um, on a boat actually, which is going to be super fun. But where we go live in real closers in the private Facebook group, group, which as many of you know, Oliver and Sam are the, the guys behind um, this group. Okay. It's the second largest Facebook group for real estate on Facebook. That is an impressive thing to talk about. So again, if you have anywhere you're going to put this, if you have a private group anywhere else that this is going to be, you really want to highlight this for the guests, right? Real Closers private Facebook group right now has over 67,000 members. Not only does it have 67,000 members, but it shows that 40.2 thousand of those member show as being active in the last 28 days. So it's great if you have a Facebook group that has a bunch of members, but if they're not active, it's not going to mean anything at all to your potential guests. So you want to make sure you let them know, check it out. This is how active our group is. So you're definitely going to, your content, your face at the end when it says contact us, or do you have anything to sell or promote or whatever? And they do that at the end of the podcast, people are active. They're going to see that your potential guest wants to know. Okay. Here's the other thing that I decided to add into this deck. The days that the members are most active, believe it or not, are Sundays and Thursdays. So when we're looking to go live in the group, what days are we looking to book this podcast to go live in Real Closers? Probably Thursday. Okay. So we want them to know how is the engagement in this group in the last 28 days? There has been almost 14,000 comments. There's been almost, there's been almost 26,000 reactions in the last 28 days. So this is a very active group and they need to know that. Um, times the members are the most active. So what, what do we wanna do? It's very strange that 10 a.m. on Thursday um, is the number three spot. We have Thursdays at 7 p.m. And believe it or not, the number one time people are active in this group is Sundays at 6 p.m. We're probably not gonna go live in the group Sunday at 6 p.m. I don't know about you guys, but that's major family day for me that I reserve for my family. Um, so it looks like going live on Thursdays at 10 a.m. is going to be the best possible time to go live in the Facebook group to capture the most attention. And we want them to know that. All right. And lastly, we're going to talk about the host. So this is where you're going to want everybody to know, give the accolades, talk about the host, talk about why this, why the host is relevant, why the, the podcast is doing so well. The, the host is a big part of it. After you go through all that stats and you got their attention, you go, and to top it off, here's Oliver Graff. He's a three-time Inc. 500 entrepreneur. He's co-founder and president of Big Block Realty. I talk about um, fastest growing independent owned brokerages according to Inc. 500. He's the co-founder along with Digital Marketer, High Level Mastermind Closing Table. He owns escrow and property management companies. He's active multifamily apartment investor. And he co-created Real Closers, second largest Facebook group on Facebook with 67,000 members. Okay, so that is an impressive resume for anybody to go, this guy wants to interview me about real estate and he is a pro. He knows what he's talking about. He's deep, deep, deep into real estate. I want to be on this guy's show. I want to talk to him. And then lastly, your last slide, you're going to want to put all your information for booking and contact. So I have my booking, my contact information in here because I do all of the booking and PR for Oliver um, and for Sam actually and for Big Block. So what you're going to want to do, it actually looks better if you have not your own information in here and you have somebody else's name in here and you're not representing yourself, um, you're really going to want to um, focus on that. Let me stop screen sharing real quick. I'll make sure I know how to do this. Um, all right, stop screen share. All right, awesome. So that was the deck. So you're really going to want to just get in front of people, make sure at the end, if you have any possible way that you can have someone else 
Um, be the contact person so it doesn't look like you're representing yourself. That isn't the best look, right? Um, so you're going to want to have somebody else be your contact person and book your guests and stuff for you. Send out your emails for potential guests. I have an email swipe that I can send you that really breaks down exactly how to get their attention in an email. You're going to attach this deck that I just showed you to the email. You're going to um, make sure that you give all the information in there, but you're going to want to make it short and sweet. People don't want to read a bunch of text on an email and spend, you know, 10 minutes trying to get through an email. You're going to make it short. You're going to make it sweet. You're going to make it impactful. You're going to make the titles, the, you know, the titles stand out. There's so much that you need to do um, to make sure that you're getting this email out. And the one thing I will say about the email too, you're going to want to make sure you're sending it to the right person. You don't, it, nine times out of 10, you're not going to send it directly to the person um, that you're trying to interview. You're going to send it to their gatekeeper. There's so much you can do to get into that from going on LinkedIn and searching people who work at the Tom Ferry organization and getting their names on LinkedIn and sending them private messages. Um, it'll say executive assistant to so-and-so. Um, so you're really going to want to utilize social media to reach out to those contacts with this deck and with this email, right? The other way that you're going to want to do this is check your sphere of influence. Like just check your sphere. You're three degrees or maybe even two degrees away from being able to book the guests that you really, really, really want to get. Oliver said, let's get Grant Cardone. Guess what I did? I checked my sphere of influence and said, who has been in contact with Grant Cardone and has had him at their event. I'm going to contact that person, which I did. Shout out. Love you, Carrie Shaw. Um, I'm going to contact that person and see if they can get the ball rolling. They're not going to send you straight to Grant, right? They're going to say, okay, well, I have this gatekeeper. And I ended up having to go through two or three people to actually get to the right person to, to contact, to book Grant, right? But check your sphere of influence. Dive deep into social media and start searching for the people who work for the organization or company or person that you're trying to book on your podcast and reach out to them. I literally reached out to Jesse Itzler and Tom Ferry. I reached out to Tom Ferry and he responded and I finally, that's how I ended up getting in touch with his person and booking him was LinkedIn. Jesse Itzler got back to me on Instagram through a DM. Like I am deep into finding people and reaching out to people and being authentic on social media and saying, Hey, I book for this great podcast, Oliver, blah, blah, blah. Check it out. I'll send you a deck. Who, who's the right email to send this to? Who's the contact person? What's the email? So just be out there, be bold, go for it then send the email to the right person. Then you're going to head into the follow-up phase. Follow-up, key. These people sometimes go silent for weeks. They're crickets. They tell you they're going to send you an email. They don't. They tell you they're going to book by this day. They don't. You cannot get your feelings hurt. <laughs> You've got to have really thick skin and understand that you need to be tenacious in your follow-up. Send it to them again. Be super sweet. Hey, just checking in. How's everything going with you and your family during this crazy time? Any chance we can look a couple months out to see what the schedule is looking like to get you booked on this podcast, right? You really want to be sweet. You really want to be authentic, right? Keep the follow-up going. Do not give up until you get the booking. I know Sam always says, do not hang up until you get the yes. Do not hang up until you get the appointment. No different here. Do not give up until you get the booking, until you get the yes, right? Um, and I think that's kind of pretty much it. Um, that is all that I have. I mean, literally for me, um, it's about relationships. It's about being personable and it's about showing them what's in it for them. That is the number one thing. If you want this deck for me to send over to you, I'm happy to do that for you. If you want the swipe email, I'm happy to do that for you as well. I can send that to you. Just send me a DM. Um, if you have any questions about launching a podcast, booking guests, all that good stuff, I think um, the other thing we might talk about later on is potentially um, 
how we how we do this in a very systematic way on Trello. There's literally like 63 or 64 touch points in Trello from the beginning of just the guest being a concept to contacting, to booking, to every little thing you can think of all the way until the blog is done, until there's ads being run to the podcast, everything. There's 63 touch points in Trello to make a podcast actually happen um, in a very strategic and successful way. We may go over that at some point. I don't know. It's kind of a lot. Um, but I really wanted to give you guys the basics of not only how to launch a podcast, how to reach out to potential guests, especially those that are higher profile, to make sure you're showing them not only who you are and what's in it for you, which is great, but that's not what they want to see. They want to see what's in it for them. I hope this has been really helpful for you. I hope everyone's having an awesome week and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.